Okay, so this video we're looking for the sixth roots of minus 27. Now, the way we can find this out is to use uh, Euler's formula. So minus 27, so Z, K, that's for each root. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals modulus of Z to the 1 over N. And then that's cosine theta over n plus 2 pi k over n plus, and that's one angle there, plus i sine, and then the same angle again as always, theta over n plus 2 pi k over n. And that is also 1 over n. Okay, minus 27, let's draw that on the diagram, see what we're dealing with. So that's the real, that's the imaginary. Minus 27 would be somewhere along there on the real axis. So what can we find out what all these values are? The thetas, the n's, the k's, and the z's. Well, z is our complex number, which is minus 27. n is the number of roots, so n equals 6. Theta is the angle of our complex number, so our angle is this angle here from the positive real axis to wherever our line goes out to, well this is simply pi, so theta equals pi, and then k, k is just the iterations, so k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that's the 6 iteration from 0 to 5. Okay, well, modulus of z in this case is pretty easy. So we know that modulus of z is just 27. So it's just the absolute value of 20, minus 27. So let's put this in now. z to the k equals 27 to the 1 over 6. And it's 6. Cosine. Theta over n, pi over 6, plus 2 pi k over n. So 2 pi k, so 2 pi times k over n, that's over 6. So that could be pi k over 3, plus i sine pi over 6, that's 6 is better, plus 2 pi k, well it's just pi k isn't it, because we're going to put the 3 on the bottom, make sure the angles are the same, and the 1 over n, that's it already distributed with the n's on the bottom. Okay, so now, what we need to do now, 27 to the 1 6, well what we can say is, using the uh, Indices, laws of indices, 27 to the power of one third to the power of one half equals 27 to the one sixth. Well, 27 cube root is 3, and then half is square root, so square root of 3 goes in here, so square root of 3. And then we'll do the iterations from k from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So z naught, so root 3, cosine, and then when k is 0, this term disappears. So we're left with cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6, which equals root 3e to the i pi over 6. Okay, z1, so that equals root 3, modulus stays the same. Now, cosine pi over 6 plus when k is 1, we've got pi over 3. So, pi over 6 plus pi over 3 equals 1 over 6 plus 
2 over 6 equals 1 half. That's cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2 which equals root 3 e to the i pi over 2. Okay, z2. Again, square root of 3. Cosine. This time k is 2. So now we've got pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 3. So that is 1 over 6 plus 4 over 6, which equals 5 over 6. Okay, so now we see a pattern here. So 1, 3 over 6, 5 over 6. So pi, 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6, which equals root 3 e to the i. 5 pi over 6. These are all the polar forms. These are in all all his identity. Okay, so 3. Let's work through them all. Square root of 3. Cosine. So we've got 1, 6, 3, 6, 5, 6. So now we're going to be in 7, 6. Sine 7 pi over 6 equals root 3 e to the i 7 pi over 6. Now z to the 4 which equals root 3 cosine 9 pi over 6 which is 3 pi over 2 so let's just change that. Plus i sine 3 pi over 2 which equals root 3 e to the i 3 pi over 2 and now our last one which is z to the 5 and then we've done the last one we're going to draw this on the diagram to see what the pattern is so now we've got 9 which is here so now we've got 11 so 11 pi over 2 Cosine 11 pi over 2 plus i sine 11 pi. And again, 11 pi over 2, which equals root 3 e to the i 11 pi over 2. Okay, so now we're going to show all the solutions on here. So we've got pi over 6, which goes here, so there's 1. And then we've got pi over 2, so that's this one. 5 pi over 6, which goes along here. 7 pi over 6, goes along here. 3 pi over 2, that's this one. And then 11 pi over 2, which is this one. Now this, we'll see, will follow the rules of all the solutions to any formula. You've got pairs of complex conjugates here. So this one and this one reflected in the real axis here and here and here and here. So you've got three complex pairs. So you've got three complex conjugate pairs and there's also infinite infinite solutions because we can just keep going round and round and round and round and round they give us infinite solutions but these are the basic ones that we need to answer our question okay